Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of our congregation and the community of Oak Grove. It's good to come to you today. I uh, just want to continue to uh, encourage you to reach out to one another and uh, say good things to each other. It's much better than complaining. I appreciated Dale Child's words yesterday about not grumbling, and uh, that's a key essential as we all face crisis of any kind. Some things that I uh, want to mention to you. This morning we have a need at uh, one of our healthcare facilities here in town. Uh, they need, of all things, toilet paper, uh, Lysol wipes, Lysol spray, and also mask. And I want to give a big shout out to several of the ladies uh, that have been making mask and uh, bringing them to the church. Uh, they really are coming in handy and, and being used at our nursing facility. And uh, they, it's important that they keep their workers safe as they're caring for those uh, elderly that are in the nursing home. Also, I want to remind you that uh, Sunday morning service will be at 9 a.m. and uh, we'll carry on. Uh, at 9.45, all those opportunities for Sunday school class for you to connect uh, either YouTube, Facebook, or Zoom uh, will take place. The Zoom is really kind of a neat deal because you get to see the different uh, members of the class uh, visually on your computer and see that they're in attendance and they can make comments and respond, so that's neat. But if you don't have any other way to attend Sunday School. Brother Brett's doing Facebook Sunday School, and uh, you can uh, dial in there and uh, catch his lesson. But if you can't do that, you can pick the telephone up and take your quarterly and call one person, and you and that person read the lesson together. The scripture's in the quarterly. It's very handy. You can read the scripture together, look at the lesson and encourage one another that way. There are all kinds of ways that you can still be in Sunday school this Sunday morning. So uh, let me encourage you to do that. I'll put the quarterly right over there. Uh, this morning as uh, we gather around God's word, it occurred to me that, uh, that there, is, there is a greater pandemic than the coronavirus, the COVID-19 crisis. And that is the pandemic that uh, spiritually everyone, everyone faces, and that's the pandemic of sin, the sin sickness that we have in our lives. I was reading in Luke's gospel uh, this morning, and I uh, was reading through chapter 5. The Pharisees are, they're literally in Jesus' face, asking him questions at every turn. If he heals someone, they get up and walk and they're just doing good and dancing away, they fuss about it. Uh, if he reaches out to some of the uh, cast out people, they get in his face. And just on and on, they question him. In the middle of that chapter, uh, verse 27, uh, Jesus calls Matthew, or the one that we call Levi, the tax collector, Verse 27 of Luke chapter 5, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So, leaving everything behind, he got up and began to follow Jesus. Then Levi hosted a grand banquet for Jesus at his house. Now there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others who were guests with them. But the Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus replied to them, The healthy don't need a doctor, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So I was looking at that passage. It uh, came crashing down on me again that the greater pandemic that we face 
and will continue to face long after this crisis is over is the pandemic of sin sickness. And Jesus, as he came physically into this world, was born of a virgin, he lived, he ministered, died on the cross, and then was raised from the dead, now sitting at the right hand of the Father, was very aware of that pandemic, that sin sickness. And so he, as he traveled along, much as he encourages us, as you go, make disciples. As Jesus traveled along, he was always sensitive to those who were receptive to uh, an antidote uh, to what would heal the sin sickness. And that's simply by placing our faith in Jesus. Matthew decided that day, <coughs> for whatever reason, he had had enough of the life that he was living. And he followed Jesus in the way. And so excited was Matthew that he planned a big party. And, and uh, he must have been a Baptist because uh, uh, he had a banquet. And... Uh, and, and there were many other tax collector friends and others that came. The Bible says there was a large crowd that came. And uh, they were eating together. And, and it's, it's always fascinating as I imagine Jesus going to that banquet. He's kicked back. He's sitting back. He's reclining at the table. And really I envision that he's just kind of uh, sparring back and forth, just having conversation, getting to know these people, these people that have this sin sickness. Uh, and as he got acquainted with these people, they would begin to listen to what Jesus had to say and receive his love and uh, receive healing for the sin sickness that they were experiencing. But there were those scribes and Pharisees, though, and, and again, as I envisioned this happening, they, they may have just kind of broke into the party. Levi very well did not go out and round up the Pharisees and scribes because they were pretty snooty, hoity-toity, righteous people. And uh, that's, that's the uh, picture that the gospel paints of them uh, all the way through. And so Levi probably did not invite them, but they came anyway. Now, they were following Jesus around because everywhere that Jesus went, there were large crowds and they were listening and hanging on every word that Jesus would share. Maybe this is the Messiah in their mind. Maybe they were really a fact-finding group that would go around and follow Jesus and ask these questions. I don't know. But it was interesting that rather than to confront Jesus uh, personally, they confronted Jesus' disciples. And they did so in a way that I, I see this all the time. Uh, somebody standing about three feet away, maybe they're sitting three feet away, uh, and another group is over here just within earshot asking these folks questions that they really intend for Jesus. Jesus, of course, can hear them. And so he responds to them. I tell you, I came for those who want the antidote. For those who want to be healed. Uh, the doctor doesn't go to the righteous the doctor doesn't go to those who aren't sick. He goes to those that are sick. And it just so happens in this case, all of us are sick. And Jesus answered that question. And he said, uh, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And if you read between the lines and you look at what Jesus is saying, He's really implying the message to those Pharisees and scribes, those religious people uh, that uh, uh, Spurgeon of old would say have a, lo a Lord net, a long nose that they look down on people. He's saying to them, and by the way, you're sinners too. 
but I came to those ready to receive. I just ask you the question today. Are you ready to receive healing from whatever sin happens? Because regardless of what takes place in this pandemic called coronavirus, what happens in your life in regard to your sin is of far greater and more eternal importance. Are you ready to do business with Jesus? I encourage you today that you can because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is a gentleman. He is one that is very interested in your life. And by the way, fellow believers, he's interested in your neighbor's lives. He's reaching out today. He's reaching out with a warm, friendly hand that we might receive his forgiveness. I encourage you to receive it and you fellow believers that you offer it to all those that are in your neighborhoods. Be encouraged by the word of God. Let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word that, that encourages us with truth always. That we can read from your word, the Bible, and we can get uh, a message of hope. That we can be led to the forgiveness that you're offering to us at any moment that we're ready to receive. And so, Lord, I just pray that uh, we all would receive your forgiveness. And, Lord, that those who have not come to faith in you, Jesus, they would understand that through you they can have salvation and the hope of eternal life. Lord, we love you, and uh, we worship you. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen.